2023 garden season is like drawing to a close. This, not a whole lot else. Need a ride? Uh, not yet. I guess I have to explain this. We got a golf cart. Actually, if you uh, wanna come help pick squash, that's what I'm gonna be doing. About a month ago, uh, we were at an estate auction and there was a golf cart. I picked it up for pretty cheap. You know, it needed the most expensive part, which was batteries. And so there's a, a golf cart shop real close to us. So I took it there. And they had it for about three weeks. Not because of the work that needed to be done, but because just like I've seen with a lot of places, small businesses are struggling right now finding people who will actually work, which is a sad, sad thing. Nobody wants to work. And so it's just the owner and you know his one faithful employee. It took about three weeks to get the golf cart back, but once we did, we've been having fun with it. All right, so today, good morning, beautiful people. Today we are harvesting some squash. We, uh, our squash patch is done, as you can tell. Uh, the vines are, they have succumbed to the squash bug. Actually, this whole patch out here is in pretty rough shape. It's just overgrown with weeds. Uh, I haven't been able to get in here and mow because there's squash where the vines have made it into the grass. There's squash that I haven't wanted to get. We're gonna remedy that today. We're gonna pick all the squash, and then we can get in here and we can mow. Maybe I'll put the cow in here, let him eat all this stuff. So, we're gonna get all this picked, see what we can find. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Uh, some of these, really the only thing we have left, we, there might be a few zucchinis in here that have gotten away from us, but generally, the only thing that really did good for us, besides a random kushaw, I'll show you that, we'll pick that too. Uh, we had trombocinos just go crazy. We like eating trombocinos. We grow them for us and for animal food. They did pretty good this year. So, we're gonna get picking. We are picking everything. Okay. Even the not ready yet ones. That way we can turn this over. We got garlic to plant next month. Probably in the next bed down. Either that bed where the roosters are or this bed down here. We have sweet potatoes down here. I would like to grab a fork and dig up one of them, see if they're ready yet. But generally, this is what I'm after today. That's a quite a horseshoe. Uh, stem broke, huh? That's all right, that one doesn't look quite ready anyways. Trombocinos. Look at that little puny one. It wanted to be a gourd, a birdhouse gourd. Hold on, you're sitting. Wow, this grass is so wet, my boots are already soaked. And I just waterproofed them too. I don't think that wax works. Are we gonna start into the barn? Barn, shed, wherever. I think it'd probably be best to put in the barn. I don't know how well they're gonna do. This one had a bad spot and I just cut it off. Okay. Save it. Uh, it would have to be eaten immediately. Won't keep otherwise. Some of them are bad and some of them are good. Like this one looks great. Nice and dark. There you have it. There is a whole load of trombocinos. So eating these, they kind of taste like a pumpkin. They have a real like mild kind of sweetness to them. They're pretty tasty. We like them. Honestly, I think what's nice about them, like there's one right here. This one, the whole trunk is edible. And then down here in the bottom, that's where the seeds are. That's where the seeds are is in that fat part. So there's not a whole ton of seeds in them, but you can eat the entire thing. Like the whole neck is meaty 
and edible. We're gonna haul these over. I'd like to get a weight on them. We'll figure out how we can weigh them. Now that it's all, it's done, we are officially in fall. Well, I guess not officially in fall, not till uh, like next week or something like that. But it's time to start shutting down the garden. We've been doing that over the past few days, past week. Uh, it feels good, it feels good. Uh, 2023 garden season is like drawing to a close. It was, uh, it was a good year. I've been using that golf cart for chores the past week that we've had it. Oh my gosh. It is so much easier and faster not having to lug buckets around. I can just load everything up on the golf cart. The back seat lays down so it's like a, a small bed. You know, we had the discussion. It's like, do I get a side-by-side? -side? Do I get, I don't know, like a, a mini truck? We've talked about getting a mini truck. And I keep coming back to, I want something small that doesn't impact the ground. Golf carts, they're, they're pretty light. I intend to put a solar panel and a charge controller in it. There's several YouTubers that I've seen that have done that with their golf carts. Then you never have to plug them in unless you, you know, run them into the ground kind of thing. But that's what I want to do to that one. I think it would be great. Like I said, very little impact. I'm not worried about compacting the ground. We drive it in the places where there's already roads, you know, paths and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's been a blast. I think I'm gonna lift it and put slightly bigger wheels and tire tires on it to have better ground clearance, but yeah, it's been awesome. All right, they went and got me a digging fork. I'm gonna dig up some sweet potatoes. I wanna see how these have done. Uh, I think we're gonna go a little bit longer. I'm gonna wait till our first frost. But generally, this patch has done pretty good. We have not messed with it. We've left it, let it do its thing, and uh, it looks pretty good. I think what's funny is these uh, Nancy Hall sweet potatoes, that is a Nancy Hall sweet potato leaf, and this right here, that is a passion vine. The passion vine, there's some passion vine that came up in here. You almost can't even spot it in here. But usually towards the evening, I'll come out here and you can see all the passion flowers that have you know, bloomed. So it's a real striking purple, crazy looking flower in the middle of this sea of sweet potatoes. All right, I'm gonna go over here. We had weed fabric in this row. I can't even see it, gosh. And then over there, we didn't. So I'm gonna dig over there and see how those did. I think the hardest part is figuring out where the plant starts. These are no. sweet potatoes. These are Nancy Hall sweet potatoes. Where are they? Where are they? Where's the row? That's the main thing. The this is, here. This is right the row here. right here. Oh, oh. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. This is, some wet dirt. this is some wet dirt. That's pretty small. We may just let these go until our first frost. How dare you? Are they veiny? Yeah. No, right they're there. not veiny. So what I wanted to do was dig up like one plant. They're still really small. That one's got a tiny earthworm on it. So, answers that question. We're gonna let this this row right here just do what it wants to do. We'll check back later. Uh, I'm gonna go over here where the weed fabric is and we're gonna see if those are any bigger. Moment of truth. Did we grow some sweet potatoes under the weed fabric? Yep. Right there. Get a better spot. I think we got some sweet potatoes in there. Mm-hmm. Maybe some big ones too. Yeah, that plant's not wanting to let go. Like a big potato. Oh yeah, there. <laughs> uh, let go. Wow. I think don't pluck it. Dad, don't pluck it. Yeah, over here they're really deep. Hey. Ooh, two. Let's see how we did. Is this everything from that one plant? Yes, should be. I'd say we still need a little bit of time. That is a good size sweet potato. 
And that was off of one plant. Looks like they did better under the weed fabric. Uh, it's just gonna be kind of a mess getting them out because we have to cut the vines off, roll back the, uh, the cover, and then dig them up. But that's encouraging. That's a good eating size right there, those two. Uh, honestly, these are good eating size. These are gonna be real tender. These make really good sweet potato chips. Maybe we'll do that. All right, let's go uh, weigh all that squash. All right, before we weigh those, we're gonna walk over here to the volunteer kushaw. We didn't actually plant any kushaws this year, but there was a chicken planted one, and it actually did great. Uh, I'm the reason it is no longer uh, doing well. I moved the vine out of the road right here where he's driving. The vines were starting to go down the road, the, uh, the side of the hill, and I get through here to <clears throat> get to all my compost. You're in the way, Kusha. So I moved the vines out of the way, and in protest, it completely died. So there's still a few Kushas. We picked the biggest ones out of here. It looks like there's like maybe four, five left, smaller ones. So we're gonna get those picked up, and we'll take them over there and we'll weigh everything. Kusha! Tim doesn't feel very strong. Kusha, thank you for your service and your fruits. So, yeah, I was right. There's five left. Uh, I have three of them inside in the shed. We'll drag them out and we'll get a weight. This actually where the chickens are kicking compost through the fence. That nice little berm right there. It's some good stuff. It's all screened and it's beautiful compost. But it popped up right there and I mean, it looked beautiful. It was like the nicest looking plant until I moved it and it just protested and died. So, that'd be a lesson. If your squash thinks you're trying to grow it, it won't grow for you. If it thinks it's doing its own thing, it's gonna start cranking out the fruit. We'll do the kushas first since there's not as many of them and we'll get a weight total. This will be fun. Oh man, it's one of those vine borers got in which means that big one's not long for this world. 15 pounds. 11 point. Uh, it's 12 pounds, close enough. We're gonna get a weight, I'll let you guys know a total. This will be fun. So that's 74 pounds. Wow. So that's 74 pounds of Kushas. All right, let's take these off. Let's go up to 50 pounds and we'll stop. That's 50 right there. Yeah. We'll just say that's 50. Okay, offload these to the ground. This one would have been really cool if it was able to get full size. Yeah. Those ones are just a little. It'd be like a mug. Like that, that looks like something we can 48, or maybe ish. Okay, that little one. Plus. Yeah, let's say that's 15, 50, so that's 100 pounds. About 100 pounds. Okay. Where's the little one? 48, 50. Okay, set those down. That's, that's 150. 175. Wow, 275 pounds of squash. So we have 75 pounds of the Kushas, 275 pounds of Trombuccinos. Uh, we actually have not weighed any of the Kukuzis, the serpent gourds. Uh, we grow those for pig food. We can eat them too. Uh, we, we just, you know, we, really the only way I like eating them is fried and we don't eat fried food a lot. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say the Kakuzis have really produced this year. We've probably had oh, easily a thousand pounds of Kakuzis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. About every, I don't know, probably once a week, we'll go through and pick everything. And when you pick, it makes the plant start putting out more and they grow really, really fast. So we have harvested all summer. I would say probably in about June was when we started harvesting 
It has pretty much been a non-stop onslaught of kakuzis. All right, so we're gonna get these taken to the shed and figure out, ah, uh, you know what? I got a place right next to the fridge and the freezer. Yeah, if the stem is broken, put them like to the front, make sure they're easily gettable. See, this one's not gonna keep. That one's got a bug hole in it. So I'll leave this towards the front. Mountain of squash. Ah, we really need to dig a root cellar. Uh, I think that would be something marvelous. All right, there's our squash. Not like realistically, if uh, grocery stores went away tomorrow, I mean, we could survive a few months. Uh, we'd be very sick of squash, but you know, something that is kind of interesting is eating the kushaw. We don't, we're not a big, like super big fan of them. They're kind of bland, honestly. Like I would rather eat like a Cherokee tan pumpkin. Those are amazing pumpkins, they're tasty. I'm actually kind of bummed we didn't grow any this year. Next year, I think that's the main thing we're growing is Cherokee tans. There you go. We're happy about all that. That is a nice little pile of squash. Corbin, go grab the lawnmower and go down there and get honk. There he goes, he's off. So, something that we get to do this afternoon, because Meg sits in her chair and stares out the window and the garbage that is piling up around here is driving really all of us insane. It is, yeah. Like, there's a lot of just junk. We usually do this once or twice a year. We'll just come around with a wagon and we'll start loading up trash. All of us will do it. Yep. And we, uh, we'll just clean up yep. all the stuff that just, it hasn't gotten put away or it hasn't gotten dealt with, like the cardboard box that she was playing with and didn't get put away just right. stuff like that that needs to be dealt with so let's get clean okay what are we doing with the uh this thing you know what i don't even think i have the pots for this trash yeah take it out that's a lot of garbage water i think it's mostly rainwater with some garbage in it Yeah. Grab the lid. Golf cart? Yeah, grab the lid. Golf cart. Oh, it's spiders. Got a lot of the junk. There's still more. There's just clutter. Like, I need to put away those bags. I need to put the barbecue over there. I need to get rid of the burn barrel smoker. I'm going to relocate my wood pile. I'm going to relocate this table. Just stuff like that. But for the most part, got the majority of the junk. It's quite a trailer load of junk. I think we'll haul that down to the garbage. See what else we can grab. Same. There's some cardboard in there that's already mostly decomposed. I'm sitting on the ground. So we'll just haul that up and burn it. Okay. That's it. We're gonna take this up to the burn pile, the fire ring, burn that cardboard, and what's left of those screen doors. And then we're gonna go make a massive pile of broken buckets that I've been collecting. Yeah. I have so many broken buckets and they're just piling up around the shed. All right, we'll see if it lights. <laughs> thinking about it so generally I just need to get in here and weed eat but I've got you know the odd cardboard box and then a whole bunch of broken buckets like I don't even know why we're keeping that or why it didn't get thrown away but it's getting thrown away now so on and so forth it needs to be put away that's a good bucket Nope, it's got a crack in it. Don't throw it. I think this is a good bucket. Yeah, that's a good bucket. It's just dirty. No, it's still a good feeder. You know where they go? Yeah. 
There's so many Black Widow hiding holes yeah. in this thing. Anytime you have to pick it out, just be wary. Okay. Yeah, she did. Yeah. A million and one pieces. We have gotten our 30 bucks out of that parrot cage. Yes, we have. It's a parrot cage. Lay it down. It's a chicken cage. Yep. It's a pig cage. It's anything <laughs> it's any we cage. need. <laughs> All right, lady. What you got going on this afternoon? We are having some pesto chicken pasta. So we cooked up a chicken yesterday. I'm going to shred up the rest of the meat off of this. And cook some pasta, throw some pesto sauce on it. That sounds fabulous. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I'm actually going to steal the camera briefly because I guess I'm bragging. I guess that's what it is. Okay. I hit a I hit a new record with the uh, the compost pile. Wanted to actually grab the camera and document it. I was feeding the chickens a uh, rotten squash that we were gonna save and we changed our mind. And I noticed like they have not scratched in it. I was like maybe I better grab the thermometer because it was steaming this morning when I came out to do chores. Yeah, you're reading that correctly. Whoa. 180 degrees? Yeah, it's super, super hot. Wow. So this is all the kakuzi vines we chopped up yesterday and added. I kind of peeled this back just a little bit. And it's, like, it is shockingly hot. A little bit hotter, you could slow cook some meat on that. No, that right there, that's sous vide. Like 180 degrees is a new record for me. Like, I think the hottest I've done was I had one hit like 175. I've never gotten a pile up to 180. That's actually a bordering on too hot, but I'm gonna let it go. I wanna see what it does. You can tell how hot it is by the fact that the chickens aren't digging in it. Usually the way I gauge a compost pile and it's done this is all of a sudden I notice they start digging into the compost pile. But yeah, 180 degrees, that's incredible. That's really cool. See, I stole the camera. Mm -hmm. and you're continuing to cook. <laughs> so we got some pesto pasta. All the sauces at the bottom. You needed a bigger pot. I did. All right, let's do some eating. Yes, let's do that. Just food for our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's your goal. Best food ever invented is cheese. That hit the spot. That was really good. That was good. So that was the last of last year's pesto. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, we're going to do it this year. Last year, we made garlic pesto. Scapes, yeah. We took the garlic scapes, and blend them up, make pesto out of them. Same thing, just like pesto, but out of garlic scapes. So good. Oh, it's the richest, it's so garliciest amazing. stuff. If you like garlic, that is like... Mm -hmm. So we are actually this next month we're gonna plant some hard, hard neck garlic so we can have scapes. Yeah, we because we desperately missed that this year. We did mostly soft neck so we could braid them, but you don't get scapes, yep. <laughs> which was a bummer. That's right. Yeah. The things it. you learn, you like. Yeah. You stick with. Yep. All right, that is gonna do it for us for today. Mm -hmm. So we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.